Hello, everyone, and welcome everyone to Celestial Stars, where we interview entrepreneurs who are sharing their marketing information and inspiring us to be better entrepreneurs. And I'm so excited today to have the wonderful Carrie Eakins with me from Treatment Unicorn. And what uh, Carrie does is she helps therapists, wellpreneurs, and creatives get clear on what they love to do who they love to work with, and how they can make the most of their unique awesomeness. Carrie, welcome. Hello, Jill. Thank you for having me. You are. We are so excited. So I want to delve right in first, before we get into the marketing tips thing, um, I want you to share with with the listeners very quickly how you came up with the term treatment unicorn. (laughs) Uh, To be really honest, it's a silly thing and it's when when you know me you know that I am probably just a little bit yeah my sense of humor is a little bit off the wall but what it really comes down to is I think for a lot of therapists we we aren't run of the mill a lot of creatives we're not run of the mill we're not trying to do that nine to five thing we're not trying to do the thing that everybody else is trying to achieve and we're just that little bit magic you know kind of magic like a unicorn it was it just kind of came to me in that kind of flash of well if you can freaking be anything be a unicorn it's like be the best that you can be if you're a creative be the best creative you can be if you're a therapist be the wholeheartedest therapist that you can be and it's just like yeah just yeah, a little bit of swagger, just a little bit of unicorn. So that's kind of it's, work. Yeah, I love it. So it's so fun and magical, of course, as well. And, oh, um, been- just like you. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have treatment unicorn to help, as we mentioned, wellpreneurs, um, therapists. And so let's talk a little bit about that audience, because what you're going to share is, is for any audience, but just because in case yeah. we might folks who are in these fields, I want them to understand where you're coming from. So talk a little bit about the type of professions and the people that you help through treatment unicorn. Oh, I mean, anyone with a creative heart, anyone with a creative soul is my people. I mean, I, I, when I started out, it became treatment unicorn because I was particularly working with therapists. But then I had graphic designers coming to me and uh, vocal coaches coming to me and all sorts of different kind of wellpreneurs coming to me. And it it sort of expanded the repertoire. And it was just, it's just that, it's the magic of meeting somebody who's so excited about what they do. It's that whole thing of they're like giddy about going to work and doing the thing that they love every single day. And I think that's probably quite a special thing. I don't think there's a, a huge proportion of any population which is like really wholeheartedly excited. And I love working with those people. And I love getting them really close that they can really embrace what they're absolutely uniquely awesome at and they can run with it. And when they do run with it, ah, it's just amazing what you see about. I love that. You know, and I think that in our world, especially we need our wellpreneurs and our therapists and our creatives to really embrace their gifts and get out there and and do their thing because we need that, that lovely energy in our world. So thank you for serving this awesome population of people uh, through Treatment Unicorn. So what we want to talk about today is the fact that entrepreneurs are not everyone's hero. And Right, you mentioned that in your questionnaire. I mean, I love that because this is a this is something I teach my clients and students as well. And in fact, I just today was having this conversation with somebody. There's this fear often with entrepreneurs that if they don't serve everyone, they won't make money. Right? It, it comes from a place of scarcity. They really want to help, and they're afraid to go narrow. And when I flip it on them and and say, you know, you aren't intended to work with everyone, that you're actually doing yourself a disservice and that person a disservice. It does it does kind of sort of sink in. So talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on not being everyone's hero in, in from a matter of service. Yeah, and I think for a lot of us, when we when we take a craft, when we kind of um when we become an entrepreneur in a particular field, we, we go out and we seek a lot of knowledge. We learn a lot of things. We get a really broad palette, which is great. And we all need that, that schemata of knowledge. We all need to know all, all the different shades and all the different variations because then we can get 
you get that true understanding of where the, the little tinkling of your heart lies, you know, yeah. it's that, that the thing that really fires your soul. And I think when you, when you think about it from the client's perspective, it's like they need to connect with you and that tinkling of your heart. They mm-hmm. need to be excited by the work that you do. And when you feel like you're running around trying to please everybody, when you feel like everybody's needs have got to be met, even though you're not quite sure if you know the thing that they need to know, that puts you in a vulnerable place. And when yeah. you start feeling vulnerable, like, am I the right person? Can I do this? Am I, am I doing a good enough job? It eats away at your self-confidence. So by giving yourself permission to just do the bright, sparkly, tinkly things that you really love doing, yeah. instead of trying to scattergun approach everything in your field. Yeah. And you get to you get to deepen your knowledge. And that's where you come towards mastery as well. So even though you're always going to learn, and I think that's the other thing about doing the thing that you really love, you're always prepared to learn more. Yeah. So when you when you're working with a particular client who sees that magic in you, you're prepared to go further into what their requirement is and that's not about spreading yourself thin that's Mm -hmm. about deepening that devotion that you have to that client and I think it's that's where the electricity comes isn't it Jill you know when that you get that frisson of like oh I totally get what you need and oh I totally know how to meet that instead of going ah there's all of these people with all of these needs and I can't fit any of these needs into like my niche so that's so true and you talk about the confidence, you know, when you know who you are meant to serve, you know, when you meet that person, like you get the chills, right. And you're like, I can help that person. And you are so confident in your ability to whatever it is, you know, draw a graphic design, massage them, coach them on marketing. You just know, and your confidence is so strong during that point. Cause if you've ever been in a situation when you're like, I'm not sure if I can help this person, that is a horrible feeling. <laughs> right? It's like, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> so tell me how you, how you teach your unicorns how to find that sweet spot. How do you find the, how do you know what your ideal client is? What is that? How do you go through that process? I guess there's a couple of different ways of going about it. Now, you can approach it from the client end or you can approach it from the your end from your individual perspective so if you've been in business a while I always say that have a think about the clients that you most love working with and you're almost going to create a character Mm -hmm. so you're going to bring elements of each of those individuals you're going to see where the overlaps were you can see where where you've got really lit up about working with them um And it's not just about the kind of the demographics, you know, whether they're male or female, whether they're 18 to 30 or 30 to 50, whatever. It's it's not just about those demographics, but it was like, what was the excitement for you? You know, what really piqued your interest? And finding yourself back in that feeling really helps. And I think that when you kind of start to build that avatar, journaling is a really helpful tool. So the more that you can sketch out the feeling of it and not just the technicality of it the more you can allow yourself to like really get heart and gut rather than just Mm. because your brain will always go well go where the money is you need to go where the money is sure your heart and your gut allow you to build that character up which is going to be the one that you speak to which is another important thing further down the marketing line so from doing it from an entrepreneur's perspective, then you're going into what gets you excited, what gets you lit. What are those things that you do all the time, whether you're going to get paid for it or not? Having um, an exploration into what your values are and what your beliefs are as well. When you know what all of those things are and you match it against that character that you've drawn up of your ideal client, then you can start to see how it all fits together. So you get that kind of really nice meshing of how you work best with how they come to you. Yeah, I love that. So what happens to people who maybe haven't worked with a lot of clients or maybe they're brand spanking new, as we say here in the US, uh, what would you recommend? How how can they identify their ideal client? What are your thoughts on that? Hmm. Well, I guess there's all... (laughs) I guess you can kiss a lot of frogs. That's always a good. Yeah. Start. So, what does that mean? Tell us. Tell the listeners. 
<laughs> I think it's a it's a kind of a thing um, when you train as a massage therapist, and I guess as a creative um, use. <laughs> it's like sketching out a lot it's like it's about getting your hands on a lot of bodies um so having that broad experience again remember we were saying before about having a broad experience and then bringing it down so it is about getting your hands on people you know feeling into the work as you're feeling into the work also doing it quite intentionally so doing it with that sense of okay, what, what's cool about this and what am I not loving about this? Mm-hmm. And then going back and sort of sketching it out and making notes around that. So you get that um, God, I, I, it's almost like data. Yeah. <laughs> but it actually, it's much more about the feel. Yeah. It's, you know, it is that thing, isn't it? It's like when you start, when you start, you've got to start somewhere. Yeah. You were saying, sorry. No, I was going to say in, in, in more traditional coaching, I guess, field, the, there's the rule of thumb. And I forget, I wish I could remember who said this so I can give this person credit. Somebody way up the ladder from me said, if you don't know who your ideal client is, coach 100 people. And right. Or in your case, massage 100 people. You're going to know exactly by client number 100, who you want to work with and or who you don't want to work with. <laughs> I think as well, it's also like within that process, it's about respecting who you are. You know, if if you're, say, a writer, if you're a copywriter and you really don't enjoy writing uptight, medical ego style staff reports, then don't do reports. You learn that very quickly. So I think that there's like a natural sloughing that can take place within that 100 so it's almost like a pyramid isn't it that you you start off really broad but you allow yourself to like chamfer it in towards the top yeah to get to that top and and I think you were touching on another point too about knowing who who you are because I think that's another problem again it's a confidence issue is a lot of times um people are scared to reveal who they are and who they take a stand for uh, I, I know I've, I've had problems with this, even in my own career. And it's because you're afraid you don't want to upset somebody and you don't want to lose business. Right. So talk a little bit about that, about, you know, how, how can you, how does that, um, knowing who you are really translate in not only to finding your ideal clients, but being happy in what it is you do. Yeah. And I feel that this is something that if we all started working on this earlier in our businesses, <laughs> And to think building a business is about building a business. And I think that from my journey, building my business is actually about learning who I am first Mm. and allowing myself the compassion to not beat myself up about the failures and the love to just actually be me. And I think that as soon as we start to really, really, really know, not just hear the words, but know the words that we are not everybody's hero, but there is a very specific group of people who will love us and who will pay us happily for the work that we do. When we find confidence in that, that then can act as a mirror to ourselves. I love that. But there's also that whole thing of we have to be prepared to do the hard work. We have to be prepared to meet head on the shame that we may have experienced in our lives before and to unpack that shame and to actually really Mm. allow ourselves to see whether it's bull or whether there is a real truth behind those, Mm -hmm. those shames and those stories that we carry. And I mean, I've said before, I mean, for me, journaling was super important to actually take apart the stories I was telling myself and allowing myself to be safe in that vulnerability. And I think that when it comes down to vulnerability, Brené Brown is an amazing woman to read. She (laughs) writes so beautifully about shame and vulnerability. And I did find that building my business became easier when I allowed myself to to those vulnerable places and read those books yeah. and then not just read the books but 
do the work and feel the work and grieve for the person that I could have been and grieve for the person that I was, that I may or may not have liked, but then allow that to not get in my way as I move forward. That's the key. Mm, It is. And I think that for a lot of us is growth within ourselves will lead to the growth in our businesses. Agreed. And be uncomfortable. Yeah. It it is, you know, I think when you start to feel that discomfort, then you know the goodness is coming. It's just around the corner. And I, when you were talking, as you were talking about vulnerability, I was thinking of Brene Brown too. And yeah. um, I especially love her new book, Braving the Wilderness, because it talks so much about being brave in spite of your vulnerability. And because you know you and I are friends and I've been following you for a long time, here's an example of bravery that I see through you. Um, you get on video and you just are yourself. <laughs> You know, I mean, why we love Carrie is because you are quirky and funny and you're, you know, you're not stuffy. And so you get on video and you make these fun movements and you shake your hips and you stand in front of the camera as opposed to sitting and all of that. And talk, so talk about, you know, again, how that, that your ideal clients have to love this. I can't imagine that they don't, but how did you get brave enough to, to, stand in front of the camera and shake it like that. (laughs) And that was a total accident. It was a total accident. And I tried for so long because I came from um, a sports massage therapist background and I was used to working with male dominated teams. So I worked in rugby, I worked in football, I worked in cricket. And so I, I did, I did sports therapist girl. And I don't know what it was. There was some video I did where I, it went horribly wrong and it must have been on a live or something. And I was like, oh, actually, people like that better than when I'm being expert professional carry. And I was like, ah. But it was a big leap of faith to do it again. Yeah. Because you see the fluke, but then you've got to yeah. do it again. And yeah. And, yeah, every now and again I do try to do professional expert carry but it generally dissolves back into <laughs> I don't think you should because it's your personality is coming through I mean how you are today is it's probably the most buttoned up I've seen you and um and so you feel free to church move in if you want um you know because that's that's who you are and I think it's just you know we'll talk about a, a magnet for your ideal clients people who are meant to work with you will love that. It will resonate with that. There's a quote I used. Um, have you ever heard the expression freak flag? Wave your freak <laughs> flag around. It actually it's comes from American phrase, yeah. <laughs> well, it comes from a Jimi Hendrix song. You know Jimi Hendrix, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a song that he wrote, um, and I can't remember the title of it, but it, it was it was a protest song. Um, and he, and there's a line there, I'm going to, uh, wave my freaker flag around, wave it around, wave it around. And I think that's where the expression came from. And, and I think that's what we're doing when we do these kind of videos is we're waving our individualized freak flag around (laughs) so that the fellow freaks, and I mean that, you know, at a a time she may, well, like, Oh, that's just like me. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Because that's the cool thing, isn't it? It's like when we allow diversity, when we allow ourselves to step into our truest version, that's really, it's really comforting and it's really empowering Yeah. for everybody else. It's the ripples, isn't it? Because yeah. I think that with soul-led entrepreneurs, with creatives, with therapists, with wellpreneurs, what, you're, what you've got to bear in mind is that you feel like you're working with one person but actually you're also working with the ripples that spread into the community behind oh, yeah. that person and around that person. Very good point. And allowing them to see you in your truest colors, which allows them to stay in their truest self, it changes the dynamics all the way around. And it, yeah. it's just, that's the magic of it, isn't it? That's it the is. magic that we get fed this societal view that we should be buttoned up nine to five individuals but how many of us really are right. and it work for everybody for sure no but that's cool because there's plenty of people who do buttoned up and straight yeah. lace and then god bless them Off they they go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not your crowd <laughs> yeah crowd. <laughs> so you talked a little bit earlier about journaling and I wanted to touch base on that because you, mm-hmm. we talked about you know, how important it is to know who you want to serve and, and how important it is to own 
who you are. But for some people, they are still trying to figure that out. And I think it's always, all of us are still always trying to figure that out, but they really don't have a starting point. But you mentioned the magic of journaling. So if you could talk about just, you know, how journaling has helped you um, with your sort of own self-discovery and and what that process looks like. Yeah, it's a really simple process. It's a really simple process so long as you allow yourself to get real with it. Um, in my kind of mentoring work, I, I come across a lot of people who are like, oh, journaling, I don't know. And there's, it's weird that there's a lot of fear surrounding just words on a page, surrounding the emotion which is attached. So for me, the key is to pick the icky sticky. You know, you get that feeling of, ah, oh, I've got a resistance around this. And you can start out quite broadly. Always a nice clean sheet of paper. Always a nice clear, like half an hour or so. Even if you haven't got that, just do it. Just do the work. And you just start to delve in. And the question I always ask myself is why? So you kind of hit a sticking point and you go, but why? Why do I feel like that? And as you take yourself through the layers, each time asking yourself why, you start to realize that actually some of the meaning you have attached to things and some of the people who you bring in as characters within these stories, they're not the characters they should be or the characters you've built them to be. And the truths behind the stories sometimes are really old or messed up or they just, they, they're just a fantasy. They just don't serve you. But it's having that bravery to keep going. Now, I always have this thing um, when I'm talking to either therapists or clients and we're talking, massage clients, and we're talking about self-treatment and self-care, that there's the cup of tea point. So the cup of tea point for me is that point at which you go, oh, it's a bit uncomfortable, this. Do you know what? I I think I just, I'm just going to go put the kettle on. I'm just going to have a cup of tea or there's washing that needs hanging out or... Do you know, I've not seen the cat in a while. And when you get to that point, when you get to that level of discomfort, you know you're in the right place. You know that you're just about to hit the icky, sticky, gritty that is holding you back. And that's when you have to keep your ass sat down and you've got to keep writing. Because yes. we that you can keep bouncing off the thing that you fear. You can keep bouncing off the thing that you resist. And if you keep allowing yourself to bounce off it, you're never going to get past it. So we're back to bravery again. We're back to vulnerability. Right. We're back to Brene Brown again. <laughs> but I love that analogy of when you reach a point, and you're like, oh, I think I'll do something else right this moment, like hanging my laundry. That sounds way better than delving into this sticky point that I need to get past. I love that. And I think we us, all know what that feels like. That's it. As entrepreneurs, we're really good at, f- at getting to the sticky point and then going, I'll deal with that later. I'm not dealing with that right now. <laughs> so for those people who might be new to journaling or, um, you know, just maybe just need a starting point, you mentioned in your questionnaire that you have some journal prompts that you can share. So tell everybody how, what those are and how, how they help and where they can get them. Uh, oh, well, uh, it's, uh, it's a 20 20- I think there's a few bonus now. Originally, it was 21 prompts for 21 days because I truly believe that if you want to get into soul level of anything, you've got to keep going for 21 days. Um, but then there's a few extra ones because there's so many good ones. Um, you can find them actually on my website as well. Uh, there's a free download, um, and I'm sure we can pop a link in somewhere. Uh, but yeah, it's. 21 days and it's about the practice of it it's about making it routine it's about inviting it into your life and you've just got to do it just got to get started haven't you really when it comes to these things just just sit down and do it and just Just do the work you know I think some people think journaling is so woohoo and out there but people have been writing in diaries and journals for years you know someone even said that cave drawings or early form of journaling. And I think that's so true. We've been, we've been, we've been hitting journaling for a long time. It's not something woo hooey. It's something a lot of people would do. And if you're afraid someone's going to find it, then write it and then rip it up. I mean, (laughs) delete it from your computer, whatever you need to do. And to to be honest, it's that it's, that's also a really important thing to get over. Our, 
our fear that other people are watching us and other people are taking yeah. apart every single moment that we do. They're not, they're far too worried about everybody else watching them and taking apart every single thing that they do. 2000 and something years, this has been going on journaling, right back to meditations. You know, it's like so there true. are words that have been written that have become such keystones of our philosophies and our knowledge and they all started off as journaling it started off as somebody dumping what was going on inside their head and trying to make sense of it there's no reason not to do it there's no reason so i'll make sure that with the show notes to put the um web address to your home to your home page or is it right on the home page carrie it is there's a special link that i will send you the link oh perfect we'll make sure that's in the show notes because i would love to encourage everyone who's listening and watching to download these journal prompts you know, and just imperfectly start writing, getting past this, because it's critical for yourself and it really is critical for your business uh, to get past any of these blocks that you're feeling. Um, and especially when we talk about you're not everyone's hero, that is part of that exploration is who are you a hero to? And you often find through journaling, you, your ideal client sometimes bubbles up because it's an earlier version of you. And in, in, yes. and you can identify that and, and say, oh, that's who I'm supposed to be helping because you're further along in the journey, right? That's it. And if journaling scares the hell out of you as a concept, think of it as treasure hunting. Ah, I like that. It's I just like about that. delving in and following the clues and then you hit the treasure. I love that. <laughs> We're going to move into now into the, uh, the lightning round of questions. But before we do, is there anything else you wanted to add to, uh, to everything we've talked about today about ideal clients and knowing who you are, journaling, any, any last minute things you want to add? There's, there are so many things to add. <laughs> I'll come back for another one. <laughs> there you go. I love it. All right. Well, let's get into the funny fast questions. You ready? Okay, go I have, I have to look down because I have to read them. <laughs> so what is, what is a must-see thing people must see if they visit your hometown. So tell us your hometown and what is the one thing everyone must see? Oh, uh, Sheffield in England is my hometown and everybody must see the Peak District, which is like five minutes that away. Neat. I love that. All right. Who is your favorite fictional character? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm trying to get rid of that. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, somebody, somebody ridiculous. <laughs> Let's go with Mr. Magnolia from uh, the Quentin Blake book. There you go. There you go. Thank you for not saying Harry Potter because that's what everybody always answers. <laughs> Well, like, okay, we get it. Harry's awesome, but you right. know, there's a lot yeah. of other wonderful characters. Okay, yeah. best best thing to do on a rainy day. Keep it clean. Uh, read a book. Ooh, I like that. One of those fictional characters. <laughs> yeah, one of those children's books. It's <laughs> <laughs> only one boot. Uh, so I'm going to use the word elevator, but you know that's lift. Ready? Three people you would like to be stuck in an elevator with. Uh, ooh, um, uh, Blondie. Ooh, call me, ha- ah, call me, call me. <laughs> uh, George Harrison and, hmm, uh, hmm, uh, uh, Einstein. Go now Einstein. that is an interesting trio. Hmm. So Blondie and George could write some music and Einstein could amuse you with his witty-isms. <laughs> he could properly explain the general theory of relativity to me. Maybe he could explain quantum physics a little more to us. <laughs> so That's it. Really good understand. I lived a whole really long time. <laughs> All right, my last question. What is the best piece of business advice you've ever received? Do the bloody work. Mm. Just bloody do the work. You can think it all you want, but you've got to go and do the work. Yes. So yes. true. And that's the thing we do. We think so well. And sometimes we do so poorly. <laughs> it's <weird. laughs> it's so perfect. And it doesn't work that way. <laughs> well, Carrie, this has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate your time and your advice and your stories and your Oh, you're just your cool anal- analogies uh, for everybody. So again, for those of you who are watching, I'll make sure to include uh, the link to Carrie's 
21, maybe more uh, journal prompts <laughs> to really get you going. And you remember to that you're not everyone's hero and to really get to know who your ideal client is um, and, and really delve into that and own it and get ready to serve those people. So Carrie, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. All right, we'll catch everybody on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.